Good morning. Let us discuss Hindu paper analysis. Tamil Nadu state government told that Sterilite Copper Smelting Company will be shut down. Sterilite Copper Company, Copper Smelting Co Company will be shut down. Election Commission said that VV Pact, Voter Verifiable Paper Audit Trial is foolproof and there cannot be any tampering of VV Pacts and malfunctioning of VV Pacts. As you all know, for 2019 general elections, throughout India, we are going to have VV Pacts. Throughout India, we are going to have VV Pacts. Voter verifiable paper audit trials where after casting a note in EVM we will get a slip showing that to whom we have voted, to which party we have voted. It is like something like authentication slip. We have to give it back to the electoral officer within 7 seconds. VV packed slips are not allowed to carry it to the house. They won't allow VV pads to carry it to the house. The reason is, if you are allowed to carry this VV pad slips, already we have money power in politics. Political parties or candidates will start reimbursing the money after seeing the VV pad slip. Even in India, most of the women vote for the political party without telling to their relatives or husband or father. Generally in houses, male relatives, male dominant persons will tell to one political party. Women say yes in the house and they will come to the polling booth, sometimes vote according to their conscience. If VV pad slips are given to the house, this cannot be possible. Women cannot enjoy free citizenship and freedoms in democracy. Coming to the next article, talk it over. Talk it over. This is about Kashmir and terrorism in Kashmir. The Home Minister Rajna Singh wanted to conduct talks with Huria. Pakistan side terrorism, terrorist organizations and other things. But the article says, if the army targets and kills one terrorist, for example, in 2016, Burhan Mani was killed, a young terrorist. The funeral grounds itself are becoming recruitment sites. Youth who have seen this in the area, they are entering into the terrorism. Once a terrorist was targeted and killed, in the process of targeting and killing the terrorist, many of the innocents are being killed. At the same process, the emotional attachment, rousing the emotions, finally, new recruits are coming to the system. The only solution is dialogue and development. Next article, looking for a new clarity. This is about Indian judiciary. Looking for a new clarity, this is about Indian judiciary. The other wrote various aspects which are affecting our judicial system. Number one, last year if you see, four judges revolted against the, this year, two months back, four judges revolted against the CJI, Chief Justice of India in the Supreme Court, stating that CGI is mastering the roster. Chief Justice of India is mastering the roster. And second thing, Uttarakhand Chief Justice, Mr. K. M. Joseph, was recommended to get elevation to Supreme Court as judge. But central government have not acted aptly on this issue. And recently in Rajya Sabha, 64 members gave notice stating that they wanted to remove the Chief Justice of India Deepak Mishra but this was not allowed by the Chairman of Rajya Sabha. All these issues 
show that there is something messy in Indian judiciary. Here comes two three points. Who is who have primacy over the appointment of judges? Initially, in Sankal Chand's case, in Sankal Chand's case, it was told that executive have primacy over judiciary in judicial appointments. In the first judge's case, also called as S.P. Gupta case, the primacy was given to the primacy was given to executive. As you all know, in Sankar Chand's case, it was told that president can president according to Article 124, president will consult the such other judges in the appointment of judge and such other authorities in the appointments of judges. In Sankar Chand's case, it was told that consultation need not be concurrence. Consultation need not be concurrence. That means President, if consults the judges of Supreme Court or such other judges, while appointing the judges, that consultation need not mean that the president should agree for it. In Sankar Chand's case, this was told. In first judge's case, also called as S.P. Gupta case, it was told that the recommendation given by judiciary is not binding on the president. In second judge's case, also called as Supreme Court Advocates on Records Association case, the court told the recommendations given by judiciary should be followed by the president and only on cogent reasons he can refuse it. And finally, in third judge's case, also called as presidential reference case under advisory jurisdiction, in third judge's case, it was told that four senior most judges should be consulted before appointments and the collegium should give their recommendations in writing. In 1998, in re presidential reference case, according to Article 143, President asked, What do you mean by collegium? Collegium means consultation of four senior most judges and their opinion should be given in writing. From 1998 to 2015, the same system is followed. 99th Constitutional Amendment Act was made and National Judicial Appointments Commission was created. In 2015, Supreme Court declared that National Judicial Appointments Commission is unconstitutional and invalidated 99th Constitutional Amendment Act. It invalidated 99th Constitutional Amendment Act. And now, again, the judiciary have primacy over judicial appointments. It is ending up with judges appointing judges. But is the judiciary supreme or is the parliament sovereign? Judicial supremacy versus parliamentary sovereignty. This tussle is going on. And uh, in the government, we all know there are three arguments. Legislature, executive, and judiciary. And all the three organs should work together to run the system. Nobody is above the other. The thing is, in the three organs of the government, we have separation of powers. Separation of powers, the theory was given by Montesk. But at the same time, the three organs, we cannot decide that they should work with watertight compartments. There should be effective coordination. And judiciary was given special responsibility to be as a guardian of Indian constitution and to protect the fundamental rights. But judiciary is not a super legislature or super executive. Once, if it understands this, the sanctity of the institution can be maintained forever. And delay in cases, corruption in judiciary, all these things are also creeping into the system. If you clearance this, the entire judicial process will be fine. Otherwise, social revolution is not forever. Next article, in IPL yesterday, day before yesterday, we have Chennai Super Kings, they have won. And then, protecting the incarcerated women. Incarceration means imprisonment or putting them in jail. The other says, 
he is not arguing that women should not be arrested or women should not be kept in jails. Women can also be arrested for the offence committed, but the treatment of women in the jails should be with dignity. As you all know, one year back in Bombay, in Baikula jail, there was a killing of a lady. Nobody knows the exact reason why she was killed. But 200 interns in the jail, they fought against this and agitated against this. Coming back to this issue, if the woman is pregnant, what about her child in the womb? And uh, up to three years, the children can be raped by the baby care centers inside the jails. From three years to six years, they will be given nursery training inside the prison authorities. And beyond six years, the children will be sent to NGOs or child care homes. But nobody can guarantee whether the NGO or child care home is taking care of the child properly. Just because the child was born to a convict, that does not mean that the child's fate can be decided by an NGO or a child welfare organization. Apart from that, in the India, particularly the Boston homes, the jails for children, they are also not properly managed. All these things, if you see the vulnerability of weaker sections like women and children, we have to take care of the prisons and prison mm -hmm. authorities and they have to take care of the women properly and children properly. Because most of the crimes are done in a spur of a moment. Very rarely people will plan for a crime and do that. So criminals, if they were reformed according to Gandhi's reformation theory, they can become better citizens rather than cursing them. We have to protect them and make them as a better citizens. This is the message that was given in the article. Coming back, Jandan Yojana four long years. Exactly four years back, the Prime Minister's ambitious program, Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana was launched. At that time in India, 53% of the adults have bank accounts. Now, according to the latest survey, 80% of Indian adults have bank accounts. Jandan Yojana was successful in meeting the first target of financial inclusion. That is, most of the adults should have bank accounts. That was successful. <coughs> Second thing, out of the bank accounts which we have, which were opened from Jandan, Jandan Yojana, from last one year, 40, more than 43% of bank accounts have not been operated at all. No withdrawals, no deposits. Namesake, most of the accounts were opened. In demontation time, some of the bank, Jandan Yojana bank accounts were used for binami transactions. Beyond that, financial inclusion, if it is a target, there are various things which you have to address. It's not just opening the bank account, but whether the man has been included in the financial process, whether the growth and the benefit of the growth is reaching them or not is a question. And credit availability. If you see, according to the RBI guidelines, uh, there are two types of minor credit and major credit. Generally, minor loans, if, if they are below 2 lakhs, they are considered as minor loans. More than 2 lakhs, they are considered as major loans. Even today in India, institutionalized credit is a distinct dream. And though we have a criteria priority sector lending, most of the small and marginal farmers are unable to take this because of the lack of collateral security. And credit availability, insurance, microfinance, they all will take a long way for financial inclusion, not just opening the Jantan account. And we have one more article on Karunanidhi. As you all know, a lady called Sandhya Ravishankar wrote a biography on Karunanidhi. Karna Nidhi is a veteran politician in India, belong to DMK party and uh, the influence of Ramaswami Nayakar, also called as Periya and Anna Dhurai, they are, how they have exerted their influence on Karna Nidhi and uh, what type of uh, political ideology has followed. Beyond everything else, Karna Nidhi is a senior politician in Tamil Nadu and uh, his philosophy is a thesis subject for most of the PhD scholars in Tamil Nadu. Beyond that, Karnaridhi, we can learn a lesson but a long standing MLA from Tamil Nadu and a senior politician and uh, Karnaridhi have given a tough fight for 
AADMK in many respects. He is around 92 years old. Let us hope that we will have a best career before his demise. And uh, last but not the least, very important article, arms race. The money which we spend on arms race, if you spend on education and health, it will be far better an achievement. But countries need defense rather than anything else. These are the important current affairs. Thank you very much.